Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be making this rustic style laundry hamper. Now this project has been made from 100% pallet wood that we've reclaimed and if you've watched my previous video it'll show you how to easily dismantle and denail a pallet. So those are the boards we got from that video. So essentially this laundry hamper then splits up your coloured clothes, your whites and in my case to keep the other half happy my dusty workshop clothes. So this is a really easy project and even a beginner woodworker could do it with some basic tools so hope you enjoy this. So we're going to start off by making the front and the back part of the laundry hamper. Now this is the front part already done and it's going to be exactly the same process for the back so I'll show you how I've got to this stage. So if we flip this around what I've done is I've cut some 20 millimeter battens to connect all the pallet bits together and if I tilt it on the sides you can see the bottom of this I put in a bottom batten and that's where we're going to be connecting the base blocks to. So what I've done is I've laid down my 11 pallets if you want to make the same size laundry and hamper and I'm going to be using some spare pallet boards then to help me out with the next couple of steps. So I'm going to put my pallet board against the edge of these, use a tri-square up against the edge of my bottom pallet to get that board at 90 degrees. Then I'm going to be pushing the rest of these boards up against it, get it nice and level. Next step then. Now because we're going to be attaching some sides onto this, we're going to need to know the thickness of pallet boards. So this is just an average it gives me. I'm going to place that against the edge of this and I'm going to be drawing a line with a pencil. Spend a little tiny bit of time getting this right. It's going to pay off. I'm just connecting all these battens on with some PVA glue and a nail gun. So you could easily do this without a nail gun, just using a panel pin hammer and some panel pin nails. And all the nail gun does essentially is to speed up the process. And with this side as well, I've made sure that my lowest board is lined up with the very edge. What I mean by that is some of these aren't exactly uh, sort of square and level. So the shortest board I've lined up with the edge of the pallet board and that allows it then to sit nice and gently against the edge. And I've drawn a line across then and lined this up and to make the nailing process easier because my floor isn't completely level I put another pallet board underneath and that allow me to easily nail this board into place. Put the bottom board so it's level with the, the very bottom edge and we're going to put the bottom support on. If you notice I've trimmed this down so it fits nicely within those two areas. That's good there. Take the board away. Mark on with a, a pencil then where this needs to be. And the same drill, so roller applicator. We're going to be using a Japanese pole saw to level this off then with the top. So I'm getting closer towards my hands, move my hands away so I'm not cut towards myself. And we're going to do that with all the pieces. On the inside, then I've measured in from the edge, 45, 45 again from the other edge. And that'll allow us then to put a little sections in here for white darks and workshop clothes we're going to be making the other one for. What I've done is I've put two of my back and front bits together. because I want to make sure that I've got the central slats lined up perfectly. So I'm just doing a little score then with a pencil where these match up. So we can put these in nice and equally, and it's a good sign that these sides are all lined up already. So we can push this around now. And I'm going to be using a tri-square then, and a pencil to score these lines down. So I'll make sure that I'm putting them on square. Roller applicator job again to get the glue on. So we've got our two sides, long sides done. So we're going to make the side edges next. So I've got a, another pile of pallet boards. Step number one, if we've got any cracks or sort of knots or deformities or anything we don't want to include in our board, I'm just going to chop them off. And that gives us a nice opportunity to get a flat square edge. We're going to be measuring 300 and 24 millimetres. Little dot with our pencil, we're going to be using a tri-square then to score those lines across. Now if you get really accurately with your first one, 
you can actually use this as a template on your next one. So it pays to get the first one really right, and we're gonna cut them all then to this length. So over at my Evolution Ray 3S Combo Miter Saw, set the fence to 90 degrees, so we get 90 degree cuts along. So the first one I've marked out then, I've cut down, and I've set this little stop block fence then to make it really quick and easy to cut out the other pieces. So I'm gonna put my Year Defenders goggles on, and we're going to trim down the rest of these. So we're going to put the smaller size together now. So hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. So I've got my board there on the back. And that's just to make sure I can butt all these 11 boards touching the same edge. Uh, I've made sure that's square across the top. So I'm going to be using this pallet board as an average thickness of boards. We're going to put that against the edge and score a line. Now on the outside of that line is where we're going to want to nail our bath and two. So again, I'm going to be using a roller applicator. I just really don't want to skimp on the glue because it's the glue that's essentially going to hold this all together. All those pin nails that we're going to be putting in in a second are going to do is essentially tack this into place until the, the glue dries. So just finished nailing up the centre boards, now the difference between the outside and the centre boards is it's one pallet slat less, so we've got 10 boards on this one compared to the 11 on the outside. And that's just to accommodate for the bottom, as we put the bottom on then, these would be poking out a pallet board over the top if we hadn't taken them down. So make sure you've got 10 boards for the centre rather than 11. And the next step, because we've got all these glued up now, we're going to get an, an orbital sander, or you can even use sandpaper by hand to do this. You don't need one of these, just speeds it up again. To just knock off the, the corners, so only sharp bits of the corners. Give it a light sand over the top, and this is just going to help with the next process. So to give this a more rustic look, I'm going to be using a map gas then, and a blowtorch to pick out the grain pattern in this. Then we can put a finish over the top, so this is an optional extra. Uh, I've got a really heavy sort of rough brush. I'm just going to brush over the top to get any of these sharp curly bits that are going to come off. So we're going to do that with all our pieces that are facing on the outside. We're going to be using a warm oak polyurethane varnish. So this is a, a Wix brand one, so it's dead cheap. And I find that this works rather nice over sort of the, the character grain that we picked out with the blowtorch. So just going to brush them on in nice thin strokes. So the polyurethane varnish is dry on the other side and we're going to put our dividing pieces then into the middle. So these are the ones with 10 slats on rather than the 11 and we're just going to put them like slow into place and it's going to look like this eventually after we tack them all into place. And you can see why we put in those sort of support struts because that allows us to nail down to secure these nice and neatly. So the next step, we're going to start putting on the sides. But before we do that, we need to do a final trim of the sides. Because we've got such an irregular sort of width of these, in order to neaten this up, we can just look at the overhang that's left, mark it with a pencil, and we're just going to trim that. Now, you could use the handsaw, or if you've got one, a jigsaw would be the easiest thing to trim this. We're going to do the same thing as how we attach the central part, so a bead of glue on the joining edge. Uh, by constructing it this way, we've got one, two, three edges that the glue is on, so it's three edges of contact. So we're gonna, it's gonna be a stronger sort of structure at the end. Next step's pretty simple then. All I've done is put the top on, lined it up where it needs to be, and tack the corners, so all four corners. I'm just gonna go around now with the nail gun just to Tack them all into place and then the glue should set nicely then. So we're just ready to put our bottom battens on. The end of the battens, we're going to need to cut out a little notch for these two battens to come through. So we're just going to use our pencil, put a little line where those battens are and then we're going to gauge the thickness of the battens. Mark them onto our wood. And we know that we're going to need to cut out these. 
Now, if this was on a fine piece of furniture, we'd be using tri squares and things, but because it's quite rustic, we can get away with it. So we're going to cut these out now at the vise. So you're using our pole saw just to cut on those lines. <laughs> A scrap wood underneath, chisel and wood mallet, and we're just going to sort of chisel down just before our line. Do the same the other side. Okay, and it gives us an opportunity to peer with the chisel on these leftover bits. There we go, all into place. So we're going to need to do that for the other end. Then we can glue and nail all the boards that we've cut for this bottom section. So putting together the top then, all I've done is I've put one, two, three, four, five boards along the top for the same width. So we're going to put some battens on the top just to make this look a bit more pretty. So I've cut one batten to the, the same width. I'm going to do the same the other side. Um, I've cut then just two struts to go in. So we're going to make like a little mini frame. Now what I thought we'd do is we'd put three sort of central bits. So I've cut these up already on the miter saw. Now to get these lined up equally, so we're going to do a little bit of maths. Um, so the overall measurement of this is 120. So we go from 60 is the halfway point. 30. 90. The same the other side. We do a dry fit. This is essentially so we're making sure everything fits together it's in the right place. We'll label it all up then, and we'll be able to glue and nail this together. So we've got a finish on the back now, all done. So we're just going to be putting a hinge along this back edge. So we're going to flip it upside down. I either need to measure in from the edge, six inches either side, so six, little dot with your pencil, same again the other side. And we're going to be using a tri square then just to make sure we've got a nice square edge that we can put our hinge up against so we're not putting them on wonky. Now, by chiseling out a groove, you'd avoid this overhang. Like I said, on this piece it doesn't really matter as such. In fact, it's quite good because it gives you a little bit of grip at the front to pull the, uh, the lid up with. Yeah, seems to work pretty good. So the last step then, I've knocked up some little signs to indicate where the clothes need to be. And I can put on the, the workshop clothes first. Just gonna tack it into place with the nail gun. Thank you so much for watching tonight's video. I've tried to make it as compact as possible because there's lots of steps involved. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, please consider subscribing. If you haven't done so already, just hit the button down at the bottom there. It's free, but it really supports me and helps me out in getting more videos your way. So I hope you have a great night. Dielkenvaur, no stuff.